It's feet time! Hello, welcome to another figure review. Today we're gonna have a look at the Figma number 582. It's Berserker Mysterious Heron Axe in the Ultra version. We got another fake granola figure, another gacha girl joining the squad, and I don't really know much about this one. I read up a little bit on the lore, and I was confused. She, she's an altar? Like, she's an. No, an. an anti anti saber so it's like an anti to the anti just like what does that even mean anyway i buy cute anime figures because i like the looks and i don't always care about the lore hello but this figure actually looks cool i love the cloak and all the design really like a different vibe from the fate figures it's a lot darker looking and i'm into that kind of stuff so just let me have a look at the figure already this is also the uh, third ascension version, by the way, and standing this figure out without the base is a bit of a challenge. But that's why you have the base. I'm just saying, posing her without the base is probably not not a not a thing. Uh, 14 and a half centimeters to the top of the cowl, and that means we're going up to five point. What is this? Almost eight inch tall. Size comparisons. Here's Jolter, Salter, the SH figure art, Son Goku. Naka, Michelangelo, and Oxide. Since this being a alter version, uh, it's a lot more muted and dark tones. But previous alter versions have like more been dark blue and dark purple. This one's just straight up black. But also, I feel like it's the most colorful one of the bunch because it mixes up all the colors. You have like red and blue and black and whatnot. So starting off with the face sculpt, obviously. What stands out is the face itself and the eyes. You have like this robotic doll kind of vibe look. I mean, she's a clone and whatnot, so really like a dark and mysterious past and maybe future. But um, that's obviously the name of the game. And yes, it is a saber head. Like it's, it's well, saber, Altria, Artoria, King Arthur. Uh, we'll get more of that just in a second. Then we have the mysterious X on the front of this metal piece, which has a nice metallic. And as we go down, you can tell there's a lot of overlapping over here. I like at sometimes I feel like it's a little bit too cluttered, but I mean it's different. And as such, I kind of think it's still interesting design-wise. Also, I can tell you that the paint, we also have an X in the back going with the theme. The paint on here is so super duper clean. I haven't seen any sign of bleeding, any really going over the line, no slips, no issues whatsoever. So I'm very happy about that. We got the red lines and like the gray metallic going on. It's a little bit more muted on the front part. And I have the, the blue gloves for the hands. And we have the big ball hinge over there covering up the gaps. I like that they're using the big ball hinge on this figure. Why is it glossy on one side and glossy on and not glossy on the other side? That's small issue, but still, it, it, why? I just want to know why. Have the buttons of the code also have a tiny red line on there with some more metallic. And again, like no bleeding. This is all like molded on and they painted it so super duper nicely. Also, I might mention that you have some crimson red in the back with some of the coat that's going down. Coat is split up into different pieces. It's also fairly loose in some parts, as you can tell in the coat, which is a bit annoying if you want to get it into like a battle pose and whatnot. As we move down to the thighs, which is like the most skin she so shows in the entire figure. And it's sponsor time. Look at that cake. It's a pretty nice cake. It's a pretty nice birthday cake. I recently had a birthday. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, enough of the perving part, but you know, it looks good. It's a good cake. And then we move down to the thighs and these, these thigh swivels. Awful, but she has double hinged knees, which are a little bit loose once again, but adds the articulation. So that's very nice. And to the boots with some more metallic gray on there. And that's probably the reason why she doesn't stand so well because the feet aren't flat kind of all over the place so I mean it's accurate and overall it looks good and mysterious 
The articulation on this one is kind of wonky. I don't know what happened. So first and foremost, the head barely gets anything because of the entire cowl. The front piece over here blocking it, that's not articulated, which I don't get. So we have an entire piece rotating in there. So you have some neck articulation to help you around with that. So you can, still you don't really get backwards movement in the head itself, but at least you got the wiggle motion. It does go all the way around. And that's fine. Now for the shoulders, you have the double ball combination, which is what I'm always saying, except for this one. What is this? It's just a ball hinge connected into a peg. What? What a downgrade. So uh, yeah, that's it. It goes up and down. Can swivel it on there, obviously, on the peg. And it doesn't really move forward as much because you have none of that going on. Then you have a ball hinge in the elbow. Bring that up and actually let me zoom out because I'm just wiggling around way too much over here. And then the classic ball hinge also in the hand so you can bring that back and forth and also rotate it around. And we have some moving parts in here. Can also rotate this entire front piece of her glove so to speak. For the chest area you can bring that, ah, it has mostly wiggle motion, a little bit back and forth obviously the coat is really dragging it down somewhat because you have this entire back piece holding on to the coat. And we have some more ball hinge action there, so you can bring that up and you can also rotate that. Same with the other side, obviously, and same with the middle part. So you can stretch that out for some battle poses, then the hips, they don't lie. But uh, we have these connected on another dumbbell joint, which has like another piece in there. So let me get a good grip on it. So you can bring that side to side, no problem, goes all the way around. Goes forward actually quite nicely and also goes to the back, but once again, it's a, it's a bit wobbly, but also uh, all the coat parts are tearing back on it. Very high kick out to the side and also to the back because the Ponsu is soft plastic as such, does not get into the way and it can also rotate it on the ball in there. Then you have the fine swivels, they swivel and it look ugly. You have the double hinged knee, which could be a bit tighter, and down to the foot you have this big ball hinge in there. And yeah, and that just disconnects, but it goes back and forth. And you can also tilt this side to side, and the metal plate in front of it is just packed into the foot. You can tell there's some little pack holes on both sides. So it should move out of the way, but as I just demonstrated, if you push it too far, it just disconnects. As for the accessories, we got the kitchen sink treatment. First and foremost, we got the um, Sort Necro Caliber, which is definitely not Excalibur, but with a twist. It does look a little bit more robotic on the handle, and you have like the seafood plastic, which has a little bit of color on the tips. And then we got the Cross Caliber, which is just uh, dual lightsabers straight out of um, Star Wars The Phantom Menace. Is she a Sith Lord? Because she also comes with a force effect part that's actually said that's what it says a force effect part it's like red lightning with the hand attached I'm a big fan of that one but uh, yeah it's the dark side force effect part not you know please don't sue <gasps> what the hell and her portable terminal it screens she kind of pops up you have a connection part on the side over here because you have an extra arm which you can connect to it and then her portable, well, what is it, like the system console? Portable? Why oh, yeah, I think like this is more like the system console. And this is the portable, whatever. It's a phone, it looks like a phone, it's just black, it's just black plastic with nothing on there. And then we have the different head sculpt, which is like a lot more sable looking. And the only part where there's some paint issues, lots of bleeding in the back, unfortunately. But yeah, we have the saber bun, which doesn't move around in this one. And then for the hands, you have like these open hands, fist hands, holding hands, and just a little bit more relaxed holding for some more dynamic poses. And finally, we got the face guards. You got like the angry yelling face and the shy, curious looking to the side face. Also, this is how the faceplate connection looks like if you were wondering about that. Oh, and if you put the other hat on there, I mean, it looks great, but yeesh, the cowl's already rubbing off on it by the looks of it. But yeah, overall, just want to give you a turnaround of this one. I think it actually was great on her. So, on to the final thoughts. Final thoughts! I like this figure. I like the mysterious vibe of it, which also is already in the name. But she looks great. Articulation is better for the most part. 
except for the weird choices with the arms, which is just baffling. And it looks oh so clean. I I I'm I'm flabbergasted actually. I'm speechless almost. Because rarely have I seen the Figma where the paint is this clean. And this one has a ton of paint applications. From small line work to like bigger ones and like the metallic and and the accessories, I feel like also they threw the kitchen sink at this figure. Uh, one more look at this, this uh, the screens overall. Because you have this arm which connects to the base, and you have a ball joint in there, and another ball joint in there, so you can also rotate that whichever way you like. And I think I forgot to tell you that she has a toe hinge, but she has a toe hinge. So there you go. Other than that, um, yeah, minor complaints are just like the arm movement and the the, blah, 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 the cowl kind of rubbing off on the front hair plate. They should have done like maybe a separate one for that. But I don't know. Still, overall, good package, good figure, like it, recommend it. That's gonna do it, guys. As usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this review, hit it up with a like and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for figure views, card game stuff, and whatever the mysterious heroine acts once in the Ultra Berserker version.